A Star Wars FPS falls victim to the EA layoffs, Crash and Spyro go independent, and Gearbox look to escape a deadly embracer. I'm Ash Dixon, and this is Jinx News. The annoying part about reporting the news is that you don't really have control over what happens. Sadly, right now, the gaming industry is in pretty dire straits, and it seems these continuous waves of layoffs just won't stop. On Wednesday, EA announced that it's laying off 5% of its workforce, equating to around 670 jobs in total. EA's CEO, Andrew Wilson, sent a letter around to employees explaining the move, but screw it, I can't be bothered to quote that thing because it's yet another big speech full of corporate wishwash. The dude earned over $20 million last year. I don't care what he has to say unless it's an apology, and it's not. And that goes for all of these gaming CEOs because they all did the same thing. They all way overhired during COVID to make that sweet, sweet lockdown money. Their stockholders got even more wealthy, and now all the people that grinded away to make it possible can go get f Every single one of these massive layoffs is a tremendous failure by leadership. The kind of failure we could only dream of getting away with as workers. But not only do they get away with it, they also get tens of millions of dollars for their shortcomings. May I remind you that this is EA, the company that spent $125 million on Immortals of Avium last year, a game that no one has bought or even heard of. And this time last year, they also cut another 6% of its workforce. But hey, heads above white collars never roll. It's not just people losing their livelihood, some much anticipated games have also been cut. EA have announced that an upcoming Star Wars FPS from Respawn has been killed off. It was one of three Star Wars games announced in early 2022 and it isn't the only victim. Ridgeline Studios, the team that was developing the single player campaign for the next Battlefield game, has also been closed. The development for that has been moved to Criterion and while it's apparently making meaningful progress, it doesn't exactly inspire hope. And that means as we enter March, we've had over 8,100 video game layoffs. A horrifying number which I hope for the love of God doesn't climb much higher. The developers behind Crash Bandicoot and Skylanders have announced they're going independent. Toys for Bob were bought up by Activision back in 2005, which was bought up by Microsoft last year, and now the company has decided to go it alone. The heads of the studio have said it will allow them to return to their roots of being a small and nimble studio, and ultimately will give them control over what they create. Still, they're not cutting all of their ties. It looks like they're exploring a possible partnership with Microsoft, and don't expect any big news from them in a while. They've said they're working on their next new game, but that it's a while away from any announcements. Either way, we have many big Crash fans here at Jinx, so here's hoping for more of him. It looks like Gearbox, the studio behind the Borderlands games, might just escape the deadly clasp of Embracer. You'll likely know Embracer. Back in 2021, they went on an unprecedented acquisition spree. They gobbled up a ludicrous amount of studios, including Gearbox, for $1.3 billion, before cancelling loads of games and cutting tons of teams, and ultimately just becoming the biggest villain in gaming. I mean, EA is probably so pleased right now that an even worse gaming corporation has exploded onto the scene, practically begging for the throne of most hated gaming company. And Borderlands is a much-loved series, and while the franchise the franchise has arguably dipped in quality in recent years, and that Borderlands movie looks like absolute Hollywood tripe, it looked like things could only get worse with Embracer in control. Well, it looks like the future of Gearbox has been decided, according to a town hall by CEO Randy Pitchford anyway. He'd been saying for months that Gearbox had three potential paths. Stay with Embracer, sell to someone else, or finance a buyout and go back to being independent. And while nothing has been made official, going by his good spirit, a lot of people are now speculating that they've managed to pull off the latter. It will be welcome news for a lot of people, and along with Toys for Bob in an era where everyone seems to be being swallowed up by these massive mega corporations, it's nice to see some developers returning to their roots and focusing on what's important, making great games. It's time for the quick fire round, and while the UK is mostly famous for tea and ruthless colonialism, we now have a new claim to fame in the form of a Willy Wonka experience that took place in Glasgow over the weekend. For those of you who haven't heard of it, well, people were charged £35 per ticket for this, and it's fair to say people weren't impressed. I mean, this is the look of someone who's quickly realised that they've wasted an entire day of both theirs and their kids' lives. It got so bad that the police were called in when angry event goers demanded their money back. Actors who took part have since spilled the beans on just how shoddy the whole thing was, and unsurprisingly, it's all been yanked. But that doesn't mean it's dead, because Sims players are a rare breed, and one such player has immortalised the Willy Wonka experience 
in game. Just to clarify, it's not Luca, she just loves The Sims. They're known as I'm Callum, by the way, not confusing for scripting, and they spent 30 whole minutes on these images, which was probably about the same amount of time as the organizers spent on the whole Wonka thing. At least everyone can now experience possibly the best Oompa Loompa of all time. Earlier in the week, we covered the brand new Pokemon TCG game that's being made to coexist alongside the other Pokemon TCG game that was released only last year. Not confusing at all. Well, Pokemon TCG Pocket seems to have more of a focus on collecting and opening those sweet, sweet packs. And considering it's digital cards that you'll be collecting, there was one particular dreaded acronym that came to everyone's mind, NFTs. Now, the Pokemon company hadn't said that this new app had NFTs, but they also hadn't specified that it didn't either. And while we like to imagine that they wouldn't stoop so low, we've all been burned enough to know that truly anything is possible. Well. Good news, the Pokemon company have addressed said concerns and have made it clear that NFTs won't be in the game, thank God. And it's not like they need them anyway, because they're going to make an obscene amount of money through selling those packs. And finally, in a story that will send flashbacks to anyone who was scared by Y2K, Leap Day has caused a bit of an issue. EA Sports WRC and Theatre Rhythm Final Bar went offline yesterday because presumably the game's calendars went all messed up. Luckily, all it took for them to get back up and running was to switch the system's date to today's date, the 1st of March, and it's all sorted now, but if you were one of those people People had to use that workaround, you might want to change the date back on your consoles. Either way, big mess up from EA. And that's the show. Please give us a like and subscribe, it's always appreciated. And I'm going to be cheeky here and mention a music video that my band just put out. It took me like over 100 hours to make it and I'm super excited to finally share it, so I'd be forever grateful if you were to check it out. Either way, it's a Friday, so have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you back here on Monday.